Greetings and salutations, my friends. Today we we will be making a really actually a really fucking awesome bag, to be honest. Uh I'm I'm super proud of this. It is an accordion bag, which means basically it has a certain width when it's closed, and then once you open it, it opens like an accordion would open, hence the name. So I'm doing this in a uh, box corner style or a dop kit style, if you will. It's going to have front pocket. That's what that slit is in the pattern. It's going to have a front pocket on either side. The leather I am using is the Buckaroo Pebble Grain in black. Uh, the weight is five to six ounce. It's from Horween. I try my best to use Horween as much as possible because I will always prefer to use American made. That's just my own biases, let's say. Um, one bad thing about working with it with the whole side is that very clearly you can see my table is not big enough to roll out an entire side on. So it is kind of a pain in the ass um, to work with an entire side. But yeah, so here I am just tracing everything out i made i always make my patterns off camera partly because it's a big mess to make them and it's a lot of just like me doing math and i don't think that would be very enjoyable to watch on camera now maybe that it, you know what if that is enjoyable for you to watch on camera let me know if you if you want me to film my pattern making process let me know i'm happy to do it um the pattern material I'm using is the plastic sheeting from Weaver. For me, this is one of the best materials that I've used. Um, it holds up a long time. It sometimes can be a pain in the ass to actually cut the patterns out. And unless you have a Sharpie, a fine tip Sharpie, you will not be able to mark on this plastic sheeting. So if you're looking for a better pattern material do this it's really cheap but know that you will need to have a um a fine tip sharpie to to be able to do this properly but once you have the fine tip sharpie it, it writes beautifully on here um the only step up from this would be like acrylic but i don't really have the capabilities of cutting out acrylic um if I had a CNC, if I had a bigger shop and I had a CNC machine, then I would totally a thousand percent go to, go with acrylic because I can like have it labeled super beautifully. It'll look super nice, but at this stage, I can't really do that. Um, so the the parts I'm tracing out now are going to be the dividers, and all of those black marks you can see on the edge is like all the dividers are going to be riveted together. It's, I decided to do that instead of sewing it. Why? I honestly couldn't tell you. Now I am making sure that I have enough space at the bottom to actually um, cut out the shoulder strap. And this part that I'm tracing now, it's, I actually should not have traced it because I realized, you can see halfway, I realized, oh shit, I'm not going to have enough space. Yeah, you can see here now I'm like, oh, poo. So... I'm just uh, measuring this this stuff out now, and uh, this is a part I need to work on my commentary, um, because I end up explaining or trying to explain, and then I end up getting to these points where like I've explained everything, but me on the camera, I'm not actually done uh, doing it. <laughs> Oh, I got a comment recently um, telling me that swearing is not good on on YouTube. So you tell me whether whether you care or not. Um, but regardless, I'm gonna keep doing it because that's just how I talk. I. All right. So I've traced everything out. Now I am cutting everything out. Um, the knife I use is just a simple utility knife from Home Depot. I like them. That's how I learned 
few years ago when I started. That's how I learned how to cut everything out. Um, that's what I feel most comfortable with in my hand. And despite it not being a traditional cutting tool, the most important thing for your cutting tool is that you feel comfortable using it. Because you can, you know, use a round knife or a trim knife and whatever and be proud of yourself for using traditional tools. But if you're not comfortable with it and you're more likely to cut yourself and you're more likely to fuck up your entire project because you get a bad cut, then there's no point in using the, the traditional tool. So um, if you can use a traditional tool and you feel really comfortable with it, do it. I, you know, if I could use a, a head knife, I would use a head knife. I have a beautiful vintage head knife. I never fucking use it because it's so awkward. Regardless, yeah, cutting everything out. The straight edge that I'm using is also from Home Depot. Um, and the little square that I use is also from Home Depot. The big square, the big black square is actually a vintage one. Um, that I got from my mom who's had it for a long time and she's just letting me use it, which is nice. Uh, these parts that I'm cutting out are going to be the D-ring, like, not a D-ring, it's an O-ring, it's a ring, <laughs> it's a ring is what it is, solid brass ring, it's really nice, that's going to hold the, the ring on there, and actually, I don't even know if I show this on camera, but I have to actually make adjustments to this, because a part in the middle is too thick to actually hold the ring, so... And something I've started doing, which has made cutting out these big items really easy, is I haven't been, with the box corner, you have the gussets already attached. I'm, I'm just realize I'm pointing at the screen as if you can see me pointing at the screen. You can't. Um, I French seen the gussets on now, and it makes being able to get an entire bag out of one side so much easier. Um... Okay, so now I'm cutting out the other side, basically. And something else that I actually um, haven't mentioned, I need to mention more on social media and on YouTube and whatever, is that if you are in the North Shore area, in the Chicagoland area, um, I am doing a market every single week during the summer in Highwood at uh, Everett's Park. It's the Highwood Gourmet Market. I'm there every week from 4.30 to 9.30 p.m. every Wednesday. And it's, I mean, it's just a good time to just chill. There's a ton of great food. I mean, I'm surrounded by delicious food all the time. Uh, so yeah, if you want to come and hang out and look at leather stuff and uh, talk leather and get amazing food and listen to good music, then come on out. I'd love to meet you and see you and talk to you. All right, so here I am French seaming these things on, and I'm actually making sure that my measurements are right. And here I'm doing the initials um, stitch. And I don't know if I show. I don't think I show, but I fold. Again, I'm pointing at the camera like you can see. Uh, <laughs> I fold the edges over once I do this initial stitch line. And I've shown this angle so many times, but I fucking love seeing this angle. Just like this. Come on, Nicola, start sewing. There you go. There's just something about the needle moving up and down and the camera moving with the leather piece. Oof, it's just so amazing. There you go. There you go, buddy. Okay, and now, clean transition here. I am uh, trimming the edges, and then I just burn the edges with wax. No, I, what the fuck am I saying? I burn the edges with my lighter, and since the thread is waxed, it melts into that last hole and keeps everything in place. You'll see right here. Mm. 
melts it in there and finishes up everything very nicely. You can get a tool called the Thread Zapper, which does it without um, flame, which I see a lot of leather workers use, but I personally really don't like that. I have one, and in all honesty, it's absolute shit. So, maybe mine's faulty, I don't know, but I it really does not work well for me. So, I actually do end up showing this. Um, I'm putting glue, so I'm going to fold these edges over and do another stitch line to make the pieces lay flat. And it's basically joining two pieces together. Uh, I don't know how much of this I show. Yeah, I realize I also have to very clearly get better at editing. Um, Which is when I'm going to try and do in this video. <laughs> okay, and here I'm showing off... Uh, just using what's called a drive punch and well okay I guess that's going now <laughs> punching the holes for for the uh, dividers inside this is this bag's gonna be holding a bunch of manila files actually it is holding a bunch of manila files right now because the client I made it for absolutely loves it and that's honestly that's the best feeling is when you know that your thing that you worked really hard on is being used and being loved. That's amazing. And as a side benefit, he's literally singing my praises to everyone he meets, which is fucking awesome for business, you know? And it just eh, does feel good. I'm trying not let it go to my head, but um, it does feel nice when somebody appreciates your work. Oh, what's the quote? What's the quote? Uh, Damn it! What's the what's the William Turner quote? I'm looking it up on my phone right now. Uh, I'm cutting the zippers for the for the pocket and and the uh, main zipper. That's gonna, I mean, be the main zipper. <laughs> Ah, this is the quote. A craftsman is always pleased to hear his work is appreciated. And that's when his uh, drunk of a blacksmithing teacher is given credit for his beautiful sword <laughs> at the beginning of the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Um, but yes, that quote is very true. Honestly, it's one of the best feelings ever. One of the best parts of the job is knowing that uh, your work is appreciated and loved and actually being used. Okay, so here I am putting the um, the I'm marking for where I'm gonna put the double sided tape. No, I'm not. I'm marking where I'm gonna glue, so that I'm gonna fold those pieces over, and then. I am going to put the double-sided tape, the double-sided pate, and then I'm going to put the zipper on. Uh, yeah. Honestly, that, putting the glue on looks so cool in time-lapse. Looks like I'm, like, painting. <laughs> oh, and you can see in the background, in the top left corner, a podcast going. Listening to a good old Jordan Peterson podcast. The only downside of that is that I can't use the audio. For obvious reasons. So I need to stop doing that. <laughs> I need to play some royalty free music instead. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Okay, and now I'm uh, trimming those French seam bits off here like a so okay double-sided tape this is eighth inch tape um i know it does look thicker 
in or wider, let's say, in the video. But I assure you this is eighth inch tape. You can get eighth inch and quarter inch. I don't know why it looks wider in the video. But yes, okay, I'm putting this as opposed to glue primarily just because it's cleaner and it takes a second to actually line up the pieces. Um, and so, yeah, I just, this just works better. Oh, and I end up actually taking the ends, the end pieces off because I realize that it's just not going to work with how I have the bag constructed. Um, because when you do this bag like this, you end up having to split the zipper. And so you can't really have those end pieces on because you split the zipper. Once you have it placed, you split the zipper. Then you put the stitch line in that will hold each end of the zipper. Then you join the zipper again and sew the ends together. So it doesn't really work to have the end pieces. And I realized that right Oh, okay, I guess I don't show it, but I realize it right now. And here I'm putting in the stitch line. The reason this looks so crazy fast is because I was already going crazy fast in full um, length or full time mode. Wow, you just got an uncomfortably close view of my skin. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> and I have it time lapse, so. Okay. What the hell, Nicola? Why is there why is this so long? Oh sweet baby Jesus. Okay, here we go, other side. Nice. Wow, I'm just flying through this, man. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. This is just kind of a fucked um, shot. Here's a cool shot, though, of uh, joining the zipper again. I don't know what the fuck that was. Made for a good Instagram reel, though. <laughs> and uh, here I am now turning the bag inside out. And then I will be joining these pieces together first with binder clips and then with uh the sewing machine and uh as you can see my tripod kept falling over because of weight reasons and yeah to be honest i was kind of getting exhausted by this point um and so i didn't bother with gluing it or putting tape or anything for whatever reason oh my god this is insane yeah uh anyone with epilepsy is probably gonna not want to watch this part the reason my hand was flying up so much is because um why was it actually Oh, yeah, it's because I was hand cranking. And the wheel's, like, right off to the right of where the camera is. And so, yeah, this is not a great angle, but I didn't really have any other options for uh, camera angles, so I apologize. Okay, now what? Now what are you doing, Nicola? You are, oh, I'm joining the seams together. Okay. This is the most satisfying part of the bag. And this is why I keep doing them in this style. Um, is because once you have the zipper on and you have all the detail stuff done, all you have to do is four straight seams and the bag is done. So that's the seams I'm doing now. Um, and you'll see once I turn the bag right side out, you'll see how this kind of goes together. But these are the side seams. If you think about a dop kit or like a shave kit, um, 
you have the side seams and it kind of makes like a square or rectangle depending on the dimensions that's what these are and uh, there's a couple parts that are stupidly thick oh now you're just getting a close-up what are you doing Nico? yeah and um since there are a few parts that were extremely thick my sewing machine has a hard time going through those um i think at one point i literally have to hand sew some parts together because there's so many layers that is why kind of why i would suggest not doing the box corners on a big bag um and why you should definitely get a cylinder arm machine before you get a flatbed machine. Get a cylinder arm machine with a flatbed attachment because the, let's say the classical style of making a bag, which is like more rounded and less square, uh, you need a cylinder arm machine to be able to do it. Or, I mean, you don't, but it makes it a lot easier. And... It's a more versatile uh, construction type. It doesn't do anything like... Oh, what's the word? Um, structurally, it's just as strong no matter what construction type you do. It's more so for ease of the craftsman who's making it. And... You know what? If my client gets to watch this video, not gets to, if he fucking whatever. If he if he watches a video, I'm sure he'll love it because he loves seeing the pieces. Okay, here we go. The uh, most frightening and stressing part, but also the most satisfying part, is turning the bag right side out. You see, you've got the D rings there, and it closes up properly. I didn't burst any seams. And uh, that's the end of the video. Like if you liked and subscribe. Right, so Bye. Live Nikola here. Bag is done. Several things I did not show in the video. Strap. The handles. Specifically because I'm going to show these as separate videos at a later date. Because you can get really, really creative with these. And... There's a lot of different techniques to do them. So I'll show that at a later date. But here's a bag. So you can see a stitch line going down here. There's pockets here. So if I open up that, there's a nice six inch deep pocket on either end, or either side, I suppose. You've got these adjustable straps, which keeps the bag from flipping over when you have it over your shoulder. So I'm gonna see if I can do this with my other hand holding the camera here. So sorry if it's a little shaky. You see, so it just slides open. A simple tri bar adjustment thingamajig doohickey, watch me wanna call it. Now on the other side. You do that, you open up the main compartment here. You open it all the way. This opens to 16 inches. You've got a pocket in here, or not a pocket. You've got basically three sections to fill with manila files and or I mean, honestly, whatever else you're going to carry in. The guy, I'm, uh, the client I'm making this for is carrying files. So, but yes, there you go. That is the bag.